Hey, what's up? I'm David Taub with NextLevelGuitar.com, and I am here at the legendary Showplace Studios with legendary producer Ben Elliott, who has captured the sounds and the magic of such famous musicians here as uh, Leslie West, Keith Richards, uh, uh, Eric Clapton won a Grammy and whatnot. Uh, I think what many of our viewers would love to see is the inside workings of an actual control room where all the magic is. This is like a behind the curtain thing like in The Wizard of Oz, you know, he's back there. It's how with we all do the, the magic. The, not exactly, a behind the scenes look. So. How we do the tricks. Yeah, so are you down for the struggle? Oh yeah. Alright, but the most important thing to remember of any control room, and maybe you could chime in, the number one rule, the rules. no smoking, no drinks, no food in the control room. Or what? What is the consequence? If well, the consequence is if something spills on the console or a piece of equipment. It may never work again. Yeah, so. it's, it's it's like it's like it's like the uh, what was that movie where they spilled the diet coke on the uh, control room on the China well, syndrome watch nuclear it, meltdown. <laughs> Sometimes people look at this as a sea of knobs and dials, and maybe we could do a little review about, okay. about your board and some of the equipment here. Okay, so this is the centerpiece of the, of the uh, control room. This is the console, the uh, recording board. And uh, you shouldn't be intimidated by all the knobs, because as soon as you learn one channel, if you look at it, the knobs are exactly the same on, on uh, all 56 channels. So this allows us to adjust the... Uh, mic pre uh, gain for your microphone and uh, equalization sort of like bass and treble would be on your home stereo and these are sends that you can use to send to the effects these up here are what's known as bussing and you can assign a something like to a track and it's normal so if I push one it's automatically going to go to channel one on the tape machine or on uh, Pro Tools or whatever device you're using in the computer. So it's kind of like one one vertical channel is just repeated for as many right, 56 channels. or it's as exact, many channels exactly as the board the has. And these are your level sliders, right? right? These are called faders. The faders, yeah. And these are mute buttons so you can turn it off. These these green buttons are, are solos, so if you wanted to listen to just, just one drums, channel right. without turning Kill everything off. off. yeah. And, and this over here is the patch bay which looks a lot like spaghetti, but uh, doesn't taste like spaghetti. And this is how we interface all the pieces of equipment, all the outboard pieces of equipment and the microphones that are plugged into the wall out in, in the recording room. And uh, it's sort of like uh, one of those old telephone uh, things. You just take a cable and connect whatever channel uh, the microphone's uh, uh, plugged into outside in the wall and then you go into whatever piece of equipment you want and then back into whatever track you want on tape or on the recording device. Awesome. I, I know you have a lot of speakers around here also and you have your yeah. main monitors about at ear level, which is yes. a good place. And I also notice you have them isolated by these little pieces of carpet on right. here to really get that true sound. You want to uh, decouple them from the console right. so no vibrations, no... Uh, sympathetic uh, frequencies exactly. that you wouldn't hear. That mixes through. Then you got right. your main room and right. ISO rooms. And then, right, sort of vocal booth. Right. And then tell me a little bit about now, uh, most, most of you may or may not know that um, we're pretty much into the digital recording age now. Right. And analog recording is kind of, uh, although personally I think it sounds a little warmer and there is a big difference in the way it sounds, but a lot of people... A lot of studios have converted to full digital because of the convenience and a few other pa factors you could it's talk a lot about. It's a lot more convenient yeah. to record and a lot quicker to record to digital. Uh, when we used tape, we had to align the tape machines and uh, make sure everything was right. And, of course, editing we did with a razor blade. And, and if stuff. you notice, and there is some old uh, tape. Actually, which you still use these because yeah, you can digital. hear you can do analog or digital. Yes, we do even a combination of both together. I remember some of my earliest recordings we did on two inch. And right, I remember the thing I remember tape. is, man, a two inch tape was expensive for right. one roll. And what was it, like 15 or 16 minutes? You get 15 minutes and change on, on one roll and... Today that roll costs close to three hundred dollars for one roll of two-inch tape for it's, fifteen minutes. So what do you think about the difference in sound between analog and digital? Because I, I think it's a pretty big difference. A lot it, of it is a big difference, but it, it's something you wouldn't notice unless you had the opportunity to A and B it to compare them. Right? Because uh, so 
today people are so used to the digital that you really don't know when on the finished product and obviously goes on to a CD or a MP3 right. today and that sort of negates everything anyway. So yeah. you're better off just recording in probably digital too. Yeah, and you have your Pro Tools set up here, right. which is pretty much the standard now yeah, in, the, in the industry yeah. for the studio. Pro Tools where everything is digital, no more slicing the tape. It's no, the, it's a lot better because it was destructive when you did it on yeah. tape. You, you yeah. could make a mistake. In fact, when we did uh, edits on the two track, we would first uh, test it on the half inch or quarter inch tape to make sure the edit actually worked before, smart. before cutting the master tape. Before cutting the master one, right. I know a lot of those old master, like, you know, this was the way it was recorded. Uh, that was the standard, what, maybe 10, 15 years ago? Uh, yeah, even uh, 10 years ago. Even right? 10 years ago. So, like, all the old classics, I mean, all the classic albums of all time, like, those are probably locked away in some vault in climate control. Because right. if anything happens to the actual two-inch master... Right. Most of them have been sort of archived now on digital so that... They, they case, went back in case something right, happened to that. Right, the tape degrades yeah, each because, generation. Through. Right, even just letting it sit, uh, the high end goes away. Yeah. So um, this is an awesome setup you have here right. where you have the ability to do analog or digital. And then I also know from coming here and just looking around, and this is only the half of it, guys, because we're going to go behind this and there's more equipment, that you have amassed a collection of, of, of rare and kind of uh, uh, great sounding, a lot of it old tube gear, but stuff that uh, you really Even don't see that often. Yeah, it's actually pieces of different consoles that are... You know, classic records were made on. That you've uh, taken yeah, out, yeah. yeah. So, you know, actually, you know, we, we still use tape for, for slap and stuff, for, for an echo or delay. And I, I use this old, this is a, a tube uh, Ampegs machine, and uh, it's a mono machine, and I use that to make uh, echoes and stuff. And uh, That's kind of like a tube tape echo that they use, like some right. sort of guitar player. Like an echo plex. Right, yeah, but yeah. I use that for vocal or slap to get sort of that Sun Studio sound or rockabilly awesome. type of thing. and. And I actually have a, uh, a vary speed control on it, so I can adjust the speed exactly, and and then you could feed it back to itself to get extra repeats and stuff too. And uh, I could start on top here. These are two very rare uh, uh, compressors. They were they were built for broadcast. They're called the uh, RCA BA six A's. They were made by RCA, and uh, they're just great. I mean, they have tons of gain, and anything you put through them. Uh, comes out like a hundred times bigger than it goes in. Yeah, it's, and it's what, are those from the 70s or 60s? Those are actually from the 50s. From the 50s. The yeah. Way, yeah. Why don't you tell the viewers uh, just real quick uh, how, how how you can use compression to make things sound big and the, the basis of compression. Well, basically it, it limits your dynamic range. So the softer stuff becomes louder and the louder stuff becomes softer. So uh, someone wouldn't have to keep adjusting their volume on their radio or uh, CD player. Uh, everything would you'd be able to hear everything much clearer. Yeah, I know you're you're a fan of. Do you run usually most of your stuff through a compressor? I do. I you pretty much compress it, everything. Yeah, huh? yeah. Some some stuff heavy for an effect. Some stuff just to even out and uh, to help it go to the right level because you don't want to get any overs in Pro Tools. Or right. Digital uh, on tape it was forgiving. It might get a little fatter when it saturates, but. In digital, once you get to distortion, it's terrible. Once it's it starts not, clipping, not and pleasing then, at yeah, all. Yeah.